So another round of applause for Georgia and Hayes. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The best place to write is... Here. Here. The best time to write is... Now. now. The best people to write are... Uh, us. Us. <laughs> uh, before we introduce our uh, final combatant, I um, want to uh, give a little preview of uh, our next feature on December 8th, right back here at the local. From the flyer. My poetry contains imagery scrolled in sparkly shades of angst. <laughs> Lorraine Cipriano. She is an amazing poet from Toledo. Uh, former Cantonite, Jacob King, tells truths in many voices. And we will also be releasing a book by him called 17 Monologues. Um, I, I'm almost done formatting it now. It is a really good book. You all should bring money to buy it. Um, from him, because I don't have copy. And then uh, our third feature is actually the grand tournament winner from 2016, um, Ephraim Nehemiah, the self proclaimed poet laureate of Wakanda. And you know, Wakanda is it's, uh, where the Black Panther is. Yeah. So, yes, three amazing poets to uh, round out. <coughs> um, speaking of rounding out the year, New Year's Eve, we're going to have a party at our house. Um, we're going to have some some musicians, uh, some games, a vegan potluck. If you're interested, let us know. We'll get you some information about that. And there was something else that I... I've oh, mentioned I $5 for people who haven't paid yet. Oh yeah, anybody who hasn't paid yet, please throw some what $5 dollars in there. Was it? What time would it be? Oh, uh, from like nine to whatever. Okay. I'll come. Maybe a little bit earlier. I'll come. Um, oh, also, there will be an open mic after our last feature, so if you want to share open mic poetry, please feel free. Our third performer of the evening blazes the esoteric. Please welcome Vince Robinson. Everyone. I have to uh, first thank God's Real for inviting me. Uh, we met a few years back, mm -hmm. and it seems like Osriel has this this way of bringing nice things my way. <laughs> and the last time we were together, it was a uh, poetry slam at the Happy Dog in Cleveland, and I ended up winning the slam and sharing it with uh, Christine Howie. And as a result of that meeting, I ended up being appointed to the Board of Heights Arts because of that connection. So I thank you, Osborne, for that. <laughs> Secondly, I'm like home. Mm -hmm. uh, you're all from Canton. Woo. Yep. OK, well, I'm a masculine type. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm going to just go ahead and admit this class of 75. <laughs> And my senior year, we beat Kent McKinley. Our record was six and four that year. So we had a deplorable record, but we beat McKinley, and that's all that happened. <laughs> so, so it's good to be home. I was on my way down, and I was trying to take the 12th Street exit off mm. of 77. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I ended up on 13th, and then I ran into a dead end, and then I'm driving around in circles, and then I went to my GPS and I'm giving it a voice command and I'm saying 135 East 6th Street mm. and it kept giving me five digit numbers on the street and it didn't identify the town of Canton. <laughs> so then I pull out my iPhone and I ask Siri and of course Siri understood me. She got me together. So <laughs> I have my cell phone GPS and I had GPS in my car and they're both giving me directions. And then there was one point where Siri said one thing and GPS said something else. Then <laughs> I roll up to the street and there's two different street names on the same street. And I'm like, how confusing is that? <laughs> so anyway, I'm here. <laughs> Which street was that? It was Market mm -hmm. and Central Plaza, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, you know, and I pull up and I see two names and I'm like, Wow. How did you do that? So, um, Mark, I relate to your feelings about new and old. Mm -hmm. 
and I have old and new. So I'm going to share some old and new. Yeah. Hard act to follow. She brought music. I left my band at home. <laughs> so, <laughs> but love both of your work, and I want to have a conversation with you about some of the things that you're dealing with because I might be able to help you, or you might be able to teach me something. So. <laughs> Cool. And uh, I'm going to start with this first poem, uh, and the title of it is If Jesus Was a Woman. And I heard you, I heard your poem. I don't want to step on any toes because everybody should practice their faith and believe in what they believe. And I'm not saying that I don't. I was baptized in Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Walnut Street. Maslin, Ohio. Okay. <laughs> so, There's no judging. Oh, okay, I just, you know, I just don't want anyone to get upset if they think I'm blaspheming or anything because this is just such a revolutionary idea. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to enjoy reading this poem because, you know, as poets, we have this pressure to be Mr. Performance Poet and everything comes off the top of your head and so forth and so on, but there's power in words, and I celebrate that, so right on. Um, just trying to remember how this poem came to me, uh, I guess, but what's most important is that it did come, and I wrote it down, so. If Jesus was a woman. If Jesus was a woman, would bullets fly? Would babies die slow deaths through deoxyribonucleic mutilation? Souls being sold to the lowest bidder exploited through the noise of hate speech. Early grave destinations in foreign nations harvesting the raw that runs the world. If Jesus was a woman, would mysterious disappearances, missing witnesses while Organs find new owners, red button nuclear fear mongering, green lighting military weapons stock acquisitions as social spending dwindles, trickle down returns to haunt the masses, minimum slave wages fail to keep pace with inflation, insurance shortfall worries threaten impatient patients, death sentences filled with commas, orange is the color of constant alert. The boogeyman, real or imagined since homeland insecurity was born. 9-11 patriot activity insensitivity stripping dignity of citizenry mentally. If Jesus was a woman, why do degrees no longer guarantee success? Why does profit from pedagogy why is it the biology of post-secondary palaces of the elite? Sweet and salty treats create diseases that precede treatment and lifetime dependency on medical intervention while physicians earn dividends with every prescription. Chickens collapse at the knees from the weight of greed on their bones. Atrazine in the feed leads to antibiotics eating at the biomes of human intestines. Ingest them and pain finds a home in tissues and tendons with prayers to mend them. But would they be needed if Jesus was a woman? Would the prisons be full of black and brown free labor padding the stock portfolios of Fortune 500 boards of directors Bored with anything less than maximum capacity, capitalizing on human property, while the masses, tuned into network mind control, tune out truth to embrace the comfort of familiar poisons designed to induce loyalty to use and winning the wars in the minds of the weakened. Overseers in clandestine vehicles, hood in trunk. Cam on dash, documenting brutal ways. Graphic replays escape prosecution for murdering undefended and defenseless, senseless homicides. They no longer hide 
prying eyes expose the hypocrisy on timelines and tweets from the streets of global dissension. If Jesus was a woman, would sleepwalking dead spirits slowly awakening to the changes coming in the ages, politics of competition and division, toiling in the souls of black folk, mired in confusion, losing their sense of history and culture through severely damaged psyches stuck in Jesus mentalities. But what if Jesus? That poem, for me, is a stream of consciousness. And the hook is, if Jesus was a woman. I really don't think the hook is necessary, but today, hooks are necessary. That's why your song, Killing It, is so effective. Because I'm killing it, killing it, killing it, and it stays with me. Great song. As a matter of fact, I was going to, to mention that you got that Taylor Swift quality. <laughs> because you work your personal experiences into song and people relate to that. You need to connect with somebody that can take you to that next level. Because you, you really do have something. So I want to give props where props are due. OK. I did that from my Yahoo Mail account. That was a message that I sent to myself so that I will be able to read it. Now I'm proceeding to notes. <laughs> the <Yep>. iOS <laughs> Omniverse. <laughs> this is a poem that um, Asriel is familiar with. It's called Starstruck. And I, one of the things that I've noticed about my writing lately is that it's kind of less personal and more socially oriented and conscious. Uh, not that it wasn't before, but as writers and poets, sometimes you get to a point where you feel like you've written that poem before. And I just stopped writing poetry and I started focusing on music. And then something happened and I had to write. And I had to push myself to write. As a matter of fact, I might share that poem with you tonight. But at any rate, things have changed. And I'm happy to be writing again. The only problem is the things that I'm writing about are things that haven't changed. This is called Starstruck. Recycled programming engraved in the minds of citizenophobes sitting in the throes of the matrix. Fables and labels attached to cell everity, dwelling in cell selfies incredibly. Eyes on me, eyes on me, silently out lively. The lie becomes the truth, and the truth becomes a lie as people die under flashing red and blue light debt and death machines. Dark matter scatters cumulus, welcoming the dawn of the age of justice. The imprint of Bishop indelibly etched into mirrors, psyche lives life after death in martyrdom. Prosecution far from reality. Badge indiscretions rarely receive appropriate scrutiny. Samaria buries her pain in empty calories, cortisol raging uncontrollably like Loman's fleeting ego. Gazebo vanished, but bloodstains remain. Status quo, quid pro quo. Crime pays for those who pay. Eyes on screens, IG and Twitter feeds, deceived as bitter indigent hearts bleed on a treaty peed upon. Open doors, closing at hate-filled borders under spite-filled orders from an imbecile. Frederick Douglass smiles from up yonder, pondering the novelty of newfound resurrection while Amiri Baraka scowls. The magic of division spins its spell on the distracted and war becomes the norm to the numb. Starstruck, stuck in the throes of the matrix. Citizenophobes sitting in the throes of the matrix. Time for awakening in the dawn of Aquarius awaiting.
who y'all think I wrote that poem about? The one I you give, love. I give you the hint. What is it? He's orange. <laughs> <laughs> Elmo. Yes. No, he's red. <laughs> Just too cheap. Yeah. yeah. I have a song about him. Do you really? Yeah. Who, Elmo? Yeah. Maybe we'll hear it. But it was just interesting to hear the president talk about Frederick Douglass as if he were alive. And he's been oh, dead for a hundred years. It's been a while. <laughs> Over a hundred years. <laughs> years. He's been Over gone for a while. Years. Yes. And uh, I wrote about Tamir Rice, and, and I guess the thought was maybe he saw the movie that um, Tupac Shakur was in. <laughs> And the character that he played was Bishop. Did you see the movie? You didn't see that movie? What movie? What movie is it? Juice. Tupac Shakur was in a movie called Juice. I and think he, I have I seen that. I think I have seen that. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember the whole movie, uh, but I'm pretty sure I've seen that. Actually, it was on TV the other day. You don't think he saw the movie? No, I don't think he watches anything. He doesn't think Trump's all right. No, 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 Tamir Rice. Oh, oh, Tamir Rice is the 12-year-old boy that was murdered by the police yeah, because he yeah. had a he had that. BB gun or whatever it was to the tip <coughs> removed. And the, the, the story was that Bishop in the movie Juice got respect after he got his gun. So in my mind, Tamir is thinking that, hey, I got this gun. Respect. Okay? Problem was... When the police rolled up on him, they didn't respect him or his gun, and they took his life real quickly. So then his mother, processing the pain that she was dealing with, was kind of eating to soothe her pain. And as a result, the combination of the cortisol and the food that she was eating caused her to gain weight and zips. You follow? I didn't catch I mean, I didn't catch me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. I know some of those things kind of go like that. You know, but that was what I was thinking. And sometimes I have to explain it for folks that don't know because it's deep, you know. The, the, the writing becomes cryptic when you don't, you know, make it simple. The masses deal with simple things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I like to write so that those who really understand, that's why we use that term esoteric, Gabrielle, mm -hmm. blazing the esoteric. Mm -hmm. So those, <coughs> who have ears hear and those who have eyes see, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I just sometimes like to depart from the convention. That being said, because I, I don't know how much time I have, but um, I have a book, it's called God Words, and uh, I'm gonna give you the title poem and explain to you that this uh, book actually came from or the title and the poem came from a poetry slam that I was in years ago. And what happened was, you know, I say what had happened was. <laughs> well, what had happened was there was a group that put on a poetry slam, and members of the group participated in the slam, and one of the people in the group won the prize. <laughs> So it was like, okay, that's kind of convenient. Mm -hmm. And the prize was a weekend at the Wyndham Hotel downtown, and I really <laughs> wanted to win that prize. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, um, a poem about slam poetry, and it's called Got Words. And the subtitle is, I heard what you said, but what did you say? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. He's reading from the page. How could he possibly be a poet? Real poets keep words in their heads for moments like these when what you say is not as important as how you say it. So in order for them to get it, one must flap arms in the breeze as if one were singing R. Kelly's anthem for an ostrich or <laughs> flip triple somersaults as flawlessly as Dominic Dawes does, but there will be no spontaneous break dancing here. No DJ scribble style sounds in your ears or rapid fire rantings that mimic bone thugs and harmony lyrics over pedantic sample frantic music. 
And there will be no pornographic descriptions of sex that really only takes place in one's imagination and somehow transforms three minutes into three hour marathons of uninterrupted, unbridled ecstasy to be shared with strangers. <laughs> no braggadocious platinum, my rims are bigger than your Tim's are not as fly as my fat pharmacological inspiration is dope because my scarf under my baseball cap cocked to the side makes me a real man, so I'm a thug. You just don't understand me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> kind of poetry ain't in me. And I'm past the black this, black that, sing song, want to be a rapper, but can't get a record deal trying to segue into spoken word artist vibe. And hope that in the meantime, somebody hears a rhyme that will make millions for the same moguls that rake millions of minds with nonsense called popular music. Brain dead listening, braids too tight, cannabis sativa has taken the fight out of them. No dreams will take flight for them, but if only I could get on deaf poetry jam that I could really slam them so-called poets think, but why? You see, I'm a real poet, and I don't have to grab sagging denim every fifth step to keep from tripping. I can write complete sentences without unintended or intentional double negatives. I don't wrestle with English or Ebonics where I am fluent in both and execute them with proficiency, and yes, I read from the page because I am first a writer, and the black and white blueprint before me will be left like footprints for you to walk in when I'm in the hereafter. And the words I leave will not or require applause or laughter, gestures, nor animated banter or vain attempts at singing that turn into disaster, for I am not a singer, a dancer, or a gymnast. I do not possess a photographic memory. I am a poet, and most importantly, I Um, I graduated from Kent State University. I made history there as the first black DJ in the Rascala. That's a club that's in the student center and it was in the basement and I was DJ Lonnie D and I had the ones and twos and uh, I used to do shows down there. So I'm going to share a piece with you that I wrote way back then. Uh, it's called A Campus Fairy Tale. And, uh, I'm going to ask you all to participate when we get to the end of this, so y'all pretend like you're in the hip hop music and mm -hmm. you know what to do. And you'll know what to do, okay? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you will. <laughs> this is kind of like a story, but it's a hip hop song, and uh, it's actually on YouTube in a couple of different places because I perform it with my band, Campus Fairy Tale. I was walking through the student center, the time was a quarter to two. When I looked into the TV lounge and saw this fine chick glued to the tube, she had her hands on her face, a Salem in her finger, a Pepsi on the arm of the chair, eyes on the screen, mind in a trance. She wanted to find herself a new romance. She looked up through the glass and said to me, mm, mm, how do you do? I was watching General Hospital and then I thought that I'd watch you. I've seen you here, I've seen you there, and I do like what I see, so since you're standing there now, you know why don't you come on home with me? Now, I was shocked to hear the sister sitting there wrapping these cold lines to me, but I shrugged off the shock collecting my thoughts and replied, I'd like to see the thoughts of your mind, the essence of your soul, the curves of your hips, the softness of your lips, the length of your hair, your manner, debonair, the grace of your walk, the smoothness of your thoughts. Then at least something out, she said, no doubt. Then listen here, I'll tell you why. I got one life to live as the world turns in these days of our lives. And if I didn't have the doctors, I doubt if I'd survive. You see, all my children are the young and the restless. They used to live in Somerset. My love of life is on the edge of night. And without these, I'd be dead. I see Maybelline, Mr. Clean, Spick and Span is my best friend. Without my scope, there'd be no hope. Chicken of the Sea is a tuna for me. I shake and bake Mazzola, Coca-Cola, Motorola is a tube I view. I wash with Tide, I wipe with 409, no static cling. I bounce in my machine. McDonald's is a place for me. You see the heck with Ponderosa. The steak's too high and much too dry. Burger King is much more closer. So now you know what I'm about. Do you still want to come to the pad? Because I can guarantee when you're with me, it's the best time you'll ever have. I said, ooh, good God. I'm scared of you, girl. 
A rap like that is hard to match, but if you got the time, I got the time, so be inclined to listen to my rhyme. I drive Mercedes Benz 450 SL. My Pierre Cardin, you know they fit me well. I wore my crown with a Stetson hat. I cover my feet with four shine spats. I got a king size bed in a king size room with a padded quilt and an electric broom. My pad is 87 stories high. Picture window, perfect view of the moonless sky. My wine is vintage 77. My Jag will take you half past heaven. I got Thermo, Atmo, room air control. I can fry your buns or freeze your toes. My radar range has a microwave. No, gotcha for me, cause I'm a rebel shade. My sports is ABC on an 80 inch screen. I don't go to the show, I got HBO. My Pioneer receiver pumps the coldest tunes to Pioneer speakers in every room. Talk about records, I got stacks of wax. Cataloged and sorted in my record racks. 33s, 45s, 78s, a different song for every day. Backgammon, chess, whist, monopoly, I'm a firm believer in variety. My carpet is shag, three inches high. My plants get hypernex so they don't die. Push button phones with a musical tone, my home is cold stone down to the bone. So if a good time is what you really want to have, then you ought to drop a dime and come straight to my pad. Now, a wise old man was walking by. He had a long gray beard and a twinkle in his eye. He looked at the lady and the young man, spoke in a way he knew they'd understand. He said, I've heard the rap from both of you, but in the book of life, your rap won't do. There's much more to life than material things and the pleasure smoking, drinking, and your music brings. It ain't about the clothes you wear, the expense of your boots, or the length of your hair. It ain't the bend you sport, the habit you support, or the clubs you choose for your disco blues. It ain't about the men you hate, the women you date, or where you roller skate. It ain't a three-car garage with three fine cars or a split-level crib with a basement bar. The keys to life are an open mind, some open ears, and an open eye. You have a soul that lives inside, a spark of love that will never die. You have a heart that pumps your blood and directs the course of your love. The kingdom to seek lies within. It has nothing to do with the money you spend. Look for love, peace, and happiness in your heart, because that's the place all good things start. Free your mind, and you will find a whole new you in a whole new time. Free your soul, and you'll control your destiny, and then you'll really be free. And then the old man said as he shook his head and walked away, I heard him say, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Now throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. And if you're ready to rock with soul poet tonight, somebody say, oh yeah. 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 And you don't stop. Now somebody, anybody, everybody, scream. Ah! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is a campus fairy tale. <laughs> I mean, what do you got? I can do this all night. So, <laughs> I mean, but I, you know, I have a couple more if you want. Short ones. Oh, does that sound like a good end poem, or do you want to hear more? Yeah, I want to hear more. All right, you want to hear more? more? Okay, um, I'll do one more. This is uh, another poem from my book, Got Words. Shameless plug. And um, <laughs> Mark, you from, he's from Lakewood. 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 Okay, maybe you can relate to this. Of course, uh, this is really more of an east side poem <laughs> as he goes to the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Give It a Rest. It's two steps from the grave. Nothing you can do to save it. You took your ride to Earl Shive, told them hook you up for $89.95, and they replied, uh-oh, better get Mako. <laughs> the coat hanger holding up your muffler is giving up, but you can't scrape up enough to take your hunk of junk to Tuffy. You're singing monthly budget blues, and gray duct tape is clinging to the rear taillight assembly, but the blink, blink, blink was gone by the wayside a long time ago. Back bumper hangs on for dear life, given a helping hand by the bungee cord, straining to save it from a roadside gravesite on the east side of Cleveland. 
High beams wink at you in oncoming lanes at night because you're too cheap to replace that burned out right low beam headlight. So you go with the three headlamp approach and blind everyone in sight. <laughs> yeah, I cussed you out last night, come to think of it, as I rolled my windows up to escape the cloud of smoke that trailed from your ghetto mobile like a crop duster flying over Nebraska cornfield. Toxic fumes watered my eyes. How did you get past E-check last July? Was the examiner blind? Is the man looking the other way as you choke and sputter down superior on that donut masquerading as a front tire? It's been there for nearly a year, almost matching the other three wheels that don't have hubcaps either. And all that remains of your rearview mirror is the adhesive patch fell to the floor from excessive to and fro caused by closing car doors, not to mention up and down like you rolling on D's with 16 switches, but you don't need them. Your shocks and struts are worn down to nothing, singing like bed springs once did in Will Chamberlain's bedroom. Your tires are bolder than Michael Jordan. Your 30-day tags expired, oh, about 364 days ago. Your brakes defy R. Kelly logic, and just because he don't see nothing wrong. <laughs> With a little bump and grind. <laughs> Doesn't mean that you have to take him literally. Face it, player. It's time to get your ghetto buggy off the street and get with JD by Ryder. <laughs> Better yet, do us all a favor, player. Get your ass a bus pass and spare us the danger. <laughs> Give it a rest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you.